Okay, so thank you everybody for attending. I'm very happy to see you all here. So, <clears throat> uh, my name is Ana Guerrero Lopez. I have been contributing to free software for like 18 years now, mostly to the Debian project. Probably you have seen my name before, it has been in something related to Debian. I have been working at Colabora since earlier this year. And today I would like to present something cool that we have on a Colabora that is called DevOps. So let's start with the presentation. What is DevOps? So DevOps is a tool written in Go that um, is used to create Debian images and you also can use it for Debian derivatives. So when I say images here, it's uh, raw media images, uh, Docker containers, um, hard disk images, uh, development sys uh, uh, root, everything you can imagine. So DevOps creates an image following a series of steps that you are providing in a recipe file. Uh, currently, we have 12 option, uh, uh, actions that you can use for creating the image. And one of the most interesting things is you don't need to be root for, creating the, for using DevOps and creating the images. We will see later why. So from the very beginning, when we designed DevOps, it's because we needed something that we could plug easily in our continuous integration system. So from the very beginning, the focus of this tool has been easier to, to, to work in this kind of workflow. It's also modular, so if somebody wants to implement a new action, it shouldn't be very difficult to do. We have interfering with other, one, other actions. The recipes are written in YAML, but it's not fully YAML. We also will see later with an example why. And of course, you can run uh, DevOps in the, any Linux system, but if you are not using Debian, uh, probably your be best bet is using a container. So <clears throat> which architectures are supported by DevOps? A priori, you can, you can use it in any in any architecture that is supported by Kimu, and is also available in Debian. However, we only have tested it in a, in a handful of them, mostly ARM, MIPS, uh, x86. It also can work potentially with RISC-5, uh, 64, that is the, the Debian port of, um, of RISC-5. I say potentially because uh, the um, um, RISC 564 is still not fully functional in Debian. The pieces are coming together. It will be in the future, but not yet. But the day is there. You will be able to, to create a root FS with um, DevOps. So <coughs> this is maybe the most complicated slide for the presentation. Uh, DevOps is using something called fake machine under the hood for um, allowing you to, to use the bot with being a root, and also for, um, for set up in the um, Kimu, so you are able to, to create images in, in architecture that are not the one in your host machine. So um, fake machine is going to create and spawn virtual machines, uh, setting up Kimu system using the S slash US, USR from your system. So once that you have that, DevOps is going to use Kimu, Kimu, Kimu user emulation for being able to, um, to run binaries of foreign architecture. What I mean with a foreign architecture is uh, for, probably your host machine is uh, AMD64. In, well, I'm talking in, in Debian post. And maybe you want to create an image of, uh, for ARM. So that's what um, foreign architecture means on this context. And then DevOps is going to have a root privilege in this uh, machine that you have set up. Something also important is uh, for fake machine to work, your user needs to have permission to uh, slash dev slash QVM. Um, this is actually one of the, th the things that is doing the trick that you don't need root privileges. And also if you want to have good performance, you really need uh, that. So also it's important to explain what is not DevOps. So it's not will system. You are using Debian behind or your derivative uh, distribution. Uh, if uh, you want to put something that is not available in Debian, you will have to do your own package, have it in your own repository, and just install it later in the image. Also, it's important to say that it's not the official way of installing Debian. That's the Debian installer. 
maybe the result is the same, but uh, <coughs> when reporting books or problems that you found is something important to, to specify. <coughs> so probably if you already tried to build a, a Debian image in the, in the past, you have realized that there are oh, plenty of tools that you can use. Uh, there are so many, I cannot really make a comparison of them. But if you are curious, uh, we have a, a page on the Debian Wiki where you can check all of them and find if there is something better for what you need or not. So <clears throat> who is using DevOps? So there is the Apertis project that is an infrastructure tailored for the automotive needs and other things. Um, it's an infrastructure, Apertis, and one of the things they are providing are um, repositories of packages because it's a mix between an Ubuntu and Debian derivative. And they are using DevOps for creating the images they are providing. So if you are curious to see the images, uh, they are in that uh, URL. They are also publishing the DevOps recipe they are using. Other project is the kernelci.org that is a service that um, is a um, service that distributely is uh, out, um, testing the uh, Ustream Linux kernel. Basically what kernel CI does is uh, build many trees of the Debian kernel, uh, makes boot tests, also have some uh, test plan for testing some subsystem that is also a <coughs> running test. And the boss is being used for creating these uh, the images that are, used, that are used with the test for, for testing the kernel. Um, if you are interested in the kernel CI project, I am giving a presentation on Wednesday about it. And when I was preparing the presentation, I decided to check if uh, somebody else was using the boss out there. And actually, I found uh, very nice examples. Um, the two first examples there, uh, Vitrovian and Acme system, are two embedded boards. And they, are <clears throat> they have a I mean, good example of what you can do with the DevOps. The third one is, um, is from Plasma Mobile. Uh, Plasma Mobile is a project that you use in Debian. Actually, they are showcase, showcasing it in the key DevOps, if you are interested. Um, they are using the DevOps for building the images. Uh, for testing their system. So they are doing continuous uh, development. And there was what for them the, the perfect tool for, for creating the images and testing that the, that the laptop uh, using Plasma Mobile was working fine. So <clears throat> I think after the presentation, the best we can do is doing a, um, a checking a small example of what you can do with the box. So uh, this will be like a minimum recipe that you can create. So here we are targeting ARM half load, that is uh, like the Debian port for ARM 32, 32 bits half load. Uh, is the bootstrapping, and the, there are two steps. The first one is the bootstrapping um, a Debian Satchel root. We will see later what the bootstrap uh, is exactly. And the second one is just uh, making a turbal with uh, the Satchel root. <clears throat> so this is like the minimum you can do. Of course, uh, most of the time you want to do way more than that. Uh, here you have a, a small uh, example of how the application run. You can see that um, um, every step the bootstrap and pack is marked here when this is starting. So it's easy to see which step is being run every time. Uh, something also interesting is you can see that here uh, the image is taking something like five minutes to be more or less. And then there is a powering off of the virtual machine and suddenly there is two hours more. It's because the images are created the, um, in a virtual machine uh, with the UTC time. So I, I am two, two, two hours ahead of that. <clears throat> so, our first example was like hard coding that I wanted to do an image for ARM, arm um, in Debian in stretch. But what happened if you more want to do the same for several Debian releases or even you want to do one and you also want to, to change the architecture? So you can use parameters. This is actually one of the cool things we can do because we are using the Go template package, text uh, slash template. 
<coughs> so we might want to run, for example, the boss and say sweet stretch, architecture AMD64, or we might want to, to create the image for Buster, and that is the next Debian release, the next stable, for ARM64. So we have an, an example with um, parameters. So here, we will be using the, the architecture um, <coughs> parameter. And in the top, we are putting the result. So in case we don't provide a parameter in the command line, it will take the, um, the default one. The same for the suite, well, the Debian release. And then we have a third parameter that is the image uh, name, the torball, what's going here, that we can create from the other two. So <clears throat> we will have uh, every tarball with a different name depending on what we are building. Uh, other the nice thing of the, of the templating system of Go is we also can use conditionals. So <clears throat> we can have some, some actions that are implementing depending on the parameters we have provided. So if we have a parameter called a type equals to tools, this step will be run, but if not, uh, the boss will skip this step. Uh, you know, you can do this at level of, uh, of um, action, but you also can use a, a small part of it, like in this example. So, <clears throat> uh, I say in the beginning that there are 12 actions of the boss, are all of them, all of these here. I am not going to explain all of them, especially the OS3 ones kind of require a, a, a new presentation, introducing what is OS3 and so on. In our former example, we use the bootstrap and pack. So uh, the bootstrap is something that is uh, very known for everybody who's using Debian or have tried to develop a bit on Debian, but probably it's not known to everybody. So I wanted to explain it quickly. So basically, <coughs> what the bootstrap does is um, allowing you the installation of a Debian-based system from scratch. So it's going to download all the dev from a Debian mirror, and it's going to create a CH root with them. We are using um, um, DPKG or APT. And this CH root is going to be like a, a Debian-based system. We have, uh, I mean, that you cannot boot, you cannot do anything but it's a Debian CH root. Uh, if you want to know more about this, uh, in the Debian wiki, <clears throat> there is a Debian page that is explaining everything quite well. <clears throat> and I think we can go to explain the, the most relevant actions. The first one is APT. I think this one is, uh, if you have used Debian, it's kind of obvious. After you have a Debian assistant, the first thing you might want to do is installing packages. So with APT, you put action APT, and you list all the packages you want to install. <clears throat> Here is the, the example from the beginning, where I have replaced the second step for APT. So there is actually a, an option that you can use that is recommends. By default in Debian, you are installing a package with all its dependencies and all its, uh, the recommends uh, line. Uh, you can use uh, the recommends parameter uh, to avoid installing the recommends, especially if you want to create a small system. If you are a user, you probably want to install, I mean, if you are using Debian in a desktop machine, you probably want to, to install the recommends. So here in the example, um, I have done something different to the, um, to the example from the beginning. As in components, I put uh, MAME, country, and non free. So I put them free because I want to install firmware Linux that is not available in the, in the main repository of Debian because what is Debian actually is Debian main. Everything else, country and non free, are like two extra um, components that are there for people's convenience, but they don't form, uh, they are not part of what is Debian proper. So often we want to install firmware, so we need to, to add them free for, for having it available to APT. So don't load. Uh, obviously, when we are building images, uh, often we want to download uh, files maybe from the internet, from other places. Um, there is a command for doing that and also integrating them in the system. For example, here, I am downloading a, a tarball on firmware, and I am telling the box that it will be available with the name of firmware. Also, there is uh, two options. That is unpack, 
because um, especially if we want to download a few files, they will be compressed. And the type of compression we are using. Um, it's important to say that this action is not going to place the files inside the system we are creating. We are just going to refer it. And if we want to copy them in the system, I will show you later how to do that with the overlay action. So <clears throat> we want to uh, install the, the file we have downloaded. Maybe we want just to copy files that we have in our system that, will, that into, the, um, into the new uh, image. So we do that with the overlay action. So um, origin, we use this when we are, um, when we want to create something that we have downloaded before and we have referred with, the, with a name. If not, we don't, put, we don't use origin and we only need to use source for pointing out what we want to copy. And then uh, the destination directory in case we don't want to copy that in the root directory of the new image we are creating. So this is a bit complicated to see only with the action, so the best here is an example. <clears throat> so we have here three actions. The first one is the download, and then we have two actions that are overlay. So the first action is exactly what we saw before, is downloading firmware from somewhere. I'm naming it firmware. The second action is overlay, where we are saying, oh, we want to copy things from over, uh, firmware that we have downloaded before. And then we say, okay, so inside firmware, there is a directory called firmware, firmware version. We are using the, the parameters, boot, and we want to copy that in our image in boot firmware. So for example, we have downloaded, I don't know, firmware for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we use copy exactly this, the boot uh, directory from the, <coughs> from the tarball into boot firmware. Uh, the second overlay action is actually copying um, uh, what is inside an overlay slash auto login directory that we have in our uh, directory next to the, the boss recipe. In this case, we are not specifying any destination. So whatever is inside the um, overlay auto login is going to be copied directly into the, into the, root, in the, into the root image. So if, for example, with autologging, we are copying a systemd file, I have to put a slash, usr, leave, blah, 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 systemd, until the file inside autologging. We have to create the, the full tree. <clears throat> so action run. Actually, this is probably the most useful action because everything that you cannot do with the other actions, you are going to do with run. So you can run a command or a script inside the target file system that you are creating or in the fake, ho fake matching host. If you are running something in the, um, in the target file system that you are created, you will be root, so you actually can do everything you want. Uh, if you are running it in the fake matching host that you are using uh, with fake root, um, you cannot do everything uh, because it's like you are a an user. And you will hit available a few variables so you will have uh, the variable root dir that points to the root of the target file system that you are using. You will have artifact dir that is a directory with all the files that you are using for, for creating your, um, your image. Image that will point to the image if you have um, already created something. And recipe dir actually for most of the time is the same artifact dir is the directory that you are using from, from the directory you are launching the box actually. So again, this is uh, more easy to, to see with an example. So yeah, again, a bootstrap where you are creating a, a file system, um, sorry, a search root. The first action is run inside the, the image that you are creating. So that's what I say, search root true, because it's been run in the search root. And with this command, we are creating a list of the packages that are installed. Given that we want to, uh, to keep that file after we have uh, finished running the box, then we need to copy it outside. That's what the second RAM um, <coughs> action does. So in this case, we, we say search root false. 
and we say, I want to copy the list file that is installed in the root of the image to my artifact D, because the artifact D is what I am going to, to keep after the DevOps ex execution. <clears throat> a second example, you also, of course, um, can use uh, variables in the, in the commands. So in this case, I am just using a command, but if I wanted to, to do a script, I will only have to pass the, the variables, well, the parameters, to the script, and it will work fine. So <clears throat> what if you want to create images partition uh, with DevOps? That's what we do with the last uh, two actions that are image, par uh, image partition and file system deploy. So with the first one, we actually create the structure we want to, to have. And the second one, most of the time, is just uh, action and file system deploy. And we'll copy, we'll copy the image we have created in the, in the partitions. So example to finish. So here, <clears throat> actually, uh, I am only creating one partition, but it's enough to, to get the idea. So I am naming it Apertis because it's an example taken from Apertis. So this is the name, this is the size, this is the kind of partition I want to do. And while well, this is easier to understand, if we check first partition and the mount points, I am defining um, a root partition using a ext4 that starts at 0% of uh, the 4 giga, uh, ends at the 100%. And then here I'm saying, okay, I want to mount this in slash root. This is the root partition, and of course I want this to boot. <clears throat> and, then, and the second action is pretty much saying, okay, copy the image we have created before into the image partition. Okay. So I have a longest example here. I would like to show mostly to, to see a big example. So here. I have a directory with all the overlays I am going to use. So, <clears throat> see, I have an overlay for installing the uh, firewall config, uh, firewall, no. Um, is the firmware, sorry. Another one for the, for the networking and another one for, for you boot for the options. And then I have a few scripts I am going to run. I have all of them here under scripts. So let's see the, the full recipe quickly. Because if you follow the presentation and look at all the step, <clears throat> it's um, all the step we have seen before, but now making a, a big recipe. So here I am saying I want to download the, this version of the firmware from, from GitHub. And I want my final image to be called like this. So here I am downloading everything from, from GitHub, from the Raspberry repository is the first thing I do. Then I bootstrap um, Debian Buster, install all these packages, especially U-boot and the, and the kernel. When I was using this example, I found a problem. <laughs> that is the U-boot version that was in Debian Buster didn't boot with uh, 418, with the kernel 418. So I have to add a, a script downloading the U-boot version from Debian Experimental and running that. So I am not going to open the script here, but if you are curious, this is in, in GitHub. You can check it out later. Um, I have a script for setuping up the user, so when I boot my image, I will have a user user. Uh, setting up a host name called Raspberry RP3. Copying the overlay for having network. So basically, this is copying a system unit. This is doing uh, what never to be, whatever that needs to be done after for having network. Here, this is the same example than before. I am copying the firmware. I am uh, sorry, uh, removing some files from the final image that I don't need. So I just remove them um, from there. Here, I am copying the U-boot files for the Raspberry Pi 3 into boot firmware. I am adding the configuration for U-boot. And here, the configuration for U-boot menu. And also, I want to, I want to um, access to my um, final image by, the, uh, by the using the um, USB 
using the um, serial cable to USB, so I am adding this to the kernel command line. Yep, here I am running U-boot, finally, because I have all the configuration I needed to install the package. So I am running the U-boot update, so my image will boot later with U-boot. And here I am creating two partitions, so you will see the first one is for the firmware, and I only want it to, to be 64 mega. That will be the called firmware. And then I want a second partition that will be the, the root of my system that will start at 64 mega and will go to the end of the image. And of course, I want this uh, to boot because it's where the kernel will be. In this case, <coughs> it's going to be a partition type of uh, Microsoft DOS. With this, we tell uh, the boss to, to copy in the um, <clears throat> image partition that we have created or imaging. And then basically the last two steps are for creating the block map file with a VMAP tool and for compressing the, the final image if you, if you want to. So if you get DevOps with, uh, from Debian right now and run this, you should have a, a good table image for the Raspberry Pi 3, 3 plus. It's the only device I have test. I have another sample here also for the, um, for the Raspberry Pi 3, for the former model. If you are curious, this one is installing a, is installing um, a stretch, but you will see it's pretty much doing almost the same. So, <clears throat> going back to the presentation. So, the future plans. <laughs> so, we don't have any great plans for, for DevOps in the future. We don't have a roadmap or list of, um, plans of things we're going to do. We are basically developing it uh, when we find something that we need or when somebody actually contributes something. And there is a file called to do, to do file, but actually that name is wrong. It's not things that we want to do. It's like more like things we would like to do, like ideas more than to do. And of course, we are continuously improving the documentation, but uh, there is always something, something to improve here and there. Okay, so if you want to know more, you have all the relevant links here in this, um, in this page. Follow there. <clears throat> Eventually here in uh, Go the Boss, the Boss Recipes will go the example I, I showed before. If not, in the meantime, if you want to check, it's uh, GitHub Anna, the Boss Recipes. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please. Hi, I've got one. So, so that looks great. Uh, as you know, I've taken interest in this for a while. The thing I've always found missing, and the reason we got multi-strap, was the ability to use two repositories to make your image. And it wasn't entirely clear whether after you've made your image, we can then use apt on another repository, or as well, a multiple set of repositories to produce all the pieces. You want multi-strap, I guess. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And the bootstrap doesn't do it, which is really annoying. So that's one of the things in the to-do file. Oh, right, okay. It's actually, if I have time tomorrow, it's one of the things I will implement because it will be super useful. Mm. Right now, I am afraid that we don't have that. Okay. I might help. Yeah, I know. Do you know, Golan? <laughs> no. Sorry. Hello. Uh, replying to walkies. You can run the bootstrap, and then you get the minimal Debian system, and then you can add the repositories you want. And, they, and then you can, uh, through a script, yeah. and then you can install whatever external packages you want to install there. Yeah, but he wants multi-strap, that's faster. Yeah, but <laughs> it's, you have a minimal thing, and then you start growing from there incrementally, adding all your, the crap you want to add. So. Do you mind coming because, <laughs> yeah, thank you. What do you suggest for building your own application? I mean, I have my custom application to install on the root of the system. I, don't, I have to, to, now I build on my own and to, to produce my package and install it later. 
So you want to know how to make a package of your application so that later yeah, you Yeah, if I can put it all together. Uh, basically, you need to learn how to make a Debian package using the yeah, helper, yeah. so following the tutorial and doing a package. If it's only for your own internal mm -hmm. consumption, I mean, if it's not for Debian, actually it's very easy to do, because when you are um, sending a package for Debian, you need to check uh, plenty of things. Mm -hmm. um, then you can set up a repository using Reprepo. Um, once you have that, you only need to add that repository. You can do a, 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 an action copying the, 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 the URL of your repository and just uh, installing it from there. If not, if you check my example, you can do as I have done with the uh, U-boot. You use wget your Debian package and you install it. I mean, okay. if, it's all, if it's only one package, you don't need to set up a repository. You just can just copy the package in the image and then do dpkg um, yeah. slash e and install it. Yeah. Uh, if um, you have more, you want a repository. I'm also thinking about having a continuous security system for my application to mm -hmm. build the package. Maybe my application use also some other dev Debian packages that depends on. So um, you will have to install the will dependencies and the dependencies before and then okay. install your package. And maybe even if an Let's say if I want to have the continuous security system for my application to produce the Debian, maybe I can build the image with your tool. Yeah. And having at, at the end, let's say before completing the image, uh, downloading the sources, building the package with a run action, um, and copy then the dev file somewhere hmm. and deploy it somewhere on, on the repository or something else. That's what Apertis is doing, in fact. Okay. They are using Debian as a base. They are adding some packages from Ubuntu. They are adding other packages. Um, they are creating images. Okay. And one more. Um, you, all the Debian uh, tools that I'm using, like yours, uh, uses KVM or QEMU mm -hmm. for to, to emulate ARM, mainly, I think. And do you know if there's some plan or something like that that they can use to uh, to do the BIOS? on a, v a VM or something on the cloud, something like that? I'm using Jenkins, I mean. Okay, you use Jenkins, but I want you to have the build machine, mm -hmm. not, not a physical Debian machine, because now I have to, to have a physical Debian machine because I need QM and so on. If you are running DevOps from a Docker container, yep. you can run it everywhere. Okay, but yeah. I cannot run it on a cloud VM or something like that, I think. Yeah, I mean, if, uh, if, uh, if uh, it's installed with Debian, you can run it directly. If not, uh, if, for example, you have a cloud instance with Fedora, you just pull the Docker container and run it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Hi. Two questions. Uh, the first one, are there some benefits of using DevOps over Make Image Creator? I don't know the other one, so I can't really tell you. Okay. Uh, and the second question is, uh, if you could compare this with, uh, the, the, there is a tool from OpenStack guys. Uh, it's called probably Disk Image Builder. Yeah. It does, I think, almost the same, apart that they are more focused on the cloud uh, than on embedded machines. And couldn't we achieve pretty the same just using that one? Hmm. Uh, I think uh, there is a wiki page I put on my presentation that I don't know, there are like, I don't know, dozens of different tools, some of them I still maintain, some of them I still not maintain, for creating Debian images. There are some of them specified for the cloud, uh, some of them who are the Debian installer modified, there is also like helper, I mean, yeah, like billion of ways. Yeah. I know some of them, but it's not the two that you mentioned, sorry. Yeah, okay, I, I think that this image builder is really similar. They're also using YAML, they also have uh, this layered mm -hmm. uh, idea, so I think it might be worth checking it. Well, I'm happy with the both, but yeah, maybe we can install some ideas. Yeah. Okay, any other question? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>